Hello, welcome once again. Yesterday we were speaking about shorts, and there was a comment made from a viewer. It was a little confusing of understanding opens and shorts. So let's take a very basic circuit over here that we have over here. We have a horn circuit over here. We have a cigarette lighter over here. Two horns are connected through a switch that's on the steering wheel that you press to activate these. The cigarette lighter is a heating element that's activated, obviously, for your lighter to be used for, obviously, for your cigarettes. Now, problem over here. Problem over here is the fuse keeps on blowing. On a good fuse, you'll measure 12 volts on one side, 12 volts after the fuse or on both sides. On a blown fuse, as we know, one side will be 12 volts, the other side will be zero and that's because this is blown this is an open circuit it's not connected anymore to b plus if you have no connection you're not going to measure 12 volts you're going to measure zero volts now it popped let's say we changed it once twice after that we get the hint there's a short somewhere from here to ground somewhere it could be either the horn circuit it could be either the cigarette lighter circuit what technique can we use to see if we have a short obviously like i said yesterday the ohmmeter function serves well in this situation we use the voltmeter function to measure the volts and we saw that it's blown the fuse is blown we know there's a short let's put on ohms and you can put on ohms over here on the lowest one or you could put on a beep function. You see this little audible? That means it beeps when you touch both. When you get to measure zero ohms or close to it, it'll beep. So you don't have to look at the display. Whichever you choose, the idea is the same. As long as you see that there's zero ohms, you know there's a short. So where am I going to put this? We leave the ground always at ground. Negative ground, chassis ground, the black... Where am I going to put the positive one if I want to measure ohms and I want to see if there's a short between here and here? Am I going to put it on the 12 volts or am I going to put it after the fuse? The answer is you're going to put it after the fuse. This is the one that's blown. So 12 volts over here, I'm connected to the battery. I cannot measure ohms on power. The other side is the one that's not detach, att attached anymore to the to the B plus. Therefore, I'm going to go to the after the fuse. This side, it's now zero volts. Now zero volts over here. I'm going to measure it. Let's say I measure open. Right. Put the meter on the function I just told you, and I measure open. What am I going to do next? As you can see over here, I have a horn switch. This completes the ground. In order to find out if any of these horns are the problem or shorted, what do I have to do? I have to close this switch. Where is that located? On your steering wheel. You press it every single time that you blow the horn. So therefore, I'm putting this positive that I just used to measure voltage now to measure ohms on the resistance scale or on the beep scale continuity they call it I'm going to press the horn sir switch on the steering wheel and I'm going to see and I'm going to look for close to zero ohms if I measure zero ohms when this is the when this is pressed, that tells me the problem is in this part of the circuit, the horn circuit, not the signal lighter. If I press the horn circuit, holding this at this point of the fuse on the ohmmeter function, and I press it, but I do not get I get open or I get very high resistance. This is not the problem. The problem is over here on this side. That's how you determine it. Now, it doesn't matter that there's no power going to the horns, that they're not going to be activated. 
There's not supposed to be any power because I took out the fuse. The fuse is blown. I'm not going to keep on putting on fuse after fuse after fuse. Obviously, this is short somewhere. So my intention is to find the, the short, but using an ohm meter function after the fuse. Where is after the fuse? Right here is the zero volts. Right here. The same point. And that's what I think the viewer that commented was a little confused on. The same point that I measured 12 volts, the same point that I measured 0 volts, that's the same point I keep this probe on. And all I do is just change the selection switch. From volts, I had it on volts, 12, 12, 12, 20 volts. I just change it to the lowest ohm, and I leave my probe the red probe at the same point and then leave my negative probe see the negative at ground always that never changes with respect to that once i get zero ohms by closing the switch i know this circuit somehow maybe one of these horn circuits maybe this is grounded maybe this wire broke or maybe it's internally in the horn circuit is touching ground whatever at least i know it's this part now, take it to a different uh, different level. An open. If you have an open circuit, what does an open circuit mean? An open circuit means I have no connection from two points. So let's say this wire broke. If this wire broke, would this fuse be blown? No, because there's no short. If this is open between here and here and knocks out the horn circuits... And knocks out your cigarette lighter. Let's say this horn switch is bad. It's open all the time, even though I press it and press it and press it. Will that affect this circuit? No. Because this current is still can flow through here. You have to look at the branch. You have to look at the separation of the branch. So therefore... There's a problem here. This is defective. We found out that this is defective. The horn circuits do not go on. But the cigarette lighter can go on. Even though they share the same fuse. But that has nothing to do because we're talking about an open, not a short. Let's go to the clock. You ever notice your clock is always on? Digital clock is always on. You always will see the digital on. It's hot at all times. It's always connected to the battery. So let's say one day I go to the, into the car. I do not see my digital clock on. What does that tell me? That tells me maybe perhaps my connection of the battery is not connected properly. It's not a tight connection. Maybe the positive or the negative going to the engine block is not connected. Why? Even though the, the battery is connected and it might be low, it might be 11 volts or 10 volts, I should still see a, a, a display on the clock. That's the number one place to look at when you can't start your car to see if your battery connections are making a proper connection. If you, the clock is working, that means my connections are pretty good. They are connected tight. If I don't see it, that means maybe... Like I said, the positive or the negative is not making a good tight connection. Tighten those connections, those cables. Here, this blue. Once, twice. What could be the problem? Obviously, the radio, the clock. If this blue on one side, 12 volts, what would be the other voltage? Zero volts. Does it make a difference of the rating of the fuse if it blows? Will I measure 12 volts here? 5 volts here, 3 volts over here, will it make a difference? No. Once this blows, I'm not connected anymore to battery. 0 volts. Doesn't matter the rating of the fuse. Doesn't matter. What, what can I do? Same technique. I take the positive, I go after the fuse where it blew. This is 12 volts, it didn't blow here. This is 0 volts, it blew here. I'm going to put my probe right here and put it on what? What am I going to do next? I was on 12 volts. I went to the fuse. I measured 0 volts. What am I going to do next? I'm going to put it on 
zero ohms. This is infinite right now, out of limit. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna put my probe over there and look for zero ohms. I'm gonna take off connectors after connector after connector until I find that the short went away. So if you have sensors, if you have a computer with connectors, you take away the connectors, you leave this on the fuse and you watch when that short goes away. The connector that you took out, that removed the short, this resist, the low resistance, is the one that is responsible. Again, they could be connected to other points also, but at least you're getting to a specific point. Again, hopefully after I feel better from this, from this COVID thing, hopefully I'll make videos outside, it'll be a little easier. But I wanted to go over this confusion from, uh, from many of the comments about the difference between a voltage, the difference between an ohm test. An ohm test will save you headaches because you're not going to keep on changing fuses. There's no reason to. Once it popped the first time, once it popped the second time, that's enough of evidence to give you to tell you, you know what, you have a short somewhere. Okay? So 12 volts here and a good one 12 volts over here. After the switch is 12 volts and after here is 12 volts. But you have to press this. The fact that the horn will not go on because I have no fuse is not relevant to me. I'm just looking for a short and a resistance check. And for that, I don't need any power. All I need is to press the switch. So if this was informative, please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. And the other one on the mode of electronic schematics by Joseph, like I said, hopefully and gradually I'm uh, uh, feeling better. And thanks for the well-wishers, and thanks for the continuation of the channel. Hopefully, I'll make more soon. Thanks for watching.